Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2020. I'm Atlas, joined by LS, and DRX just dismantled the eight-winning streak KT Rollster. And, uh, look, maybe the KT fans got a little bit too excited. Something happened. But uh, that was not an eight-wins-in-a-row team that we saw on the Rift. Yeah, that was definitely a, a, a bit of a hiccup in their journey to try to bring down Dragon X here as it was it was a nice game in in theory in terms of their their approach but obviously didn't respect the counter pick and then things just sort of fell apart from there all around though they were going mostly only even they couldn't really coordinate or get anything going bono obvious okay kiria all right it's Actually, the day of the supports well I'm, I'm curious to actually see what the vote turnout is. I know that a lot of people thought that he got undercredited by us in the post-game analysis. Now, the flash play to cancel the Darwin thing was good here, but Darwin just failed his flash. So it ends <laughs> up only being flash for flash. And so my analysis of this situation is that Thresh's flash is more valuable than Darwin's. And so even though it would be a flash for flash, I view it as a loss for Kyrian. But the fight did end up breaking out over that. He had a lot of good plays as well as hooks and lanterns in a lot of these team fights. I just feel like Chovy's short sport sportsmanship was so big, but Kyria, I think, would have been my second candidate for sure. Yeah. Just for the control throughout all the team fights, and it's the observers. Yep, classic Jonah Strong oh, with his uh, no, carrier vote. It's a tie. Yeah, but the tie gets broken by two of the Korean commentators and our lead observer in Jonah Strong. And uh, you then just add up those votes and uh, see who gets over the edge. So it was a tie between uh, between Chovy and Carrier, but Carrier wins the tiebreaker. You okay? Uh, I'm just trying to take it all in. You know, don't <laughs> mind me. Alice, I mean, don't I think it's me. okay. To be honest, uh, Chovy's already leading the charge when it comes to player of the game. So uh, give a few points over to Carrier, who now has 500, actually doing decently well uh, in the support position. I think uh, Tucson is the only other support that's ahead of him right now. So uh, definitely a good performance there from Carrier, and we'll see whether he gets to back it up with another one here in game number two. Dragon X now move over to our blue side, KT, with counter pick opportunity. And Dragon X with a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the bands, I guess. We'll see what they do decide to take away first. Well, let's take a look at what is going to go on here in the draft phase. Dragon X now going to be on blue. So probably not going to be able to get a, a, a counter pick as enormous as they managed to get in game number one. But now KT, let's see how they actually utilize counter pick potential. As Aphilios is banned away, Trundle banned away by Dragon X. I would suggest that KT just bans Senna, Callista, and Aphelios. I think that that's probably the best way to tackle this. Just make sure that none of those OP bottom lane champions do get through, and then see what they can get as far as the remainder of the uh, power picks. The problem is, is that KT really want to ban LeBlanc, Zoe, and Azir, because that gives Chovy so much power in these games. And uh, Chovy's going to be looking for one of these blind picks. And those three champions are one of the, are some of the mid laners that our LCK players are okay with blinding, as are the Kennen to be banned here again, so on. He does like playing the champion, but I don't think we've ever really liked it. Well, Callista now is getting banned away. And Kennen getting banned away, maybe Dragon Axe actually just bans Orn here, because they, they seem to really have a likingness for the Atrox, however confusing it may be. Yep, set is still available as well, so they can go towards that one if they would like to. Uh, they can go towards the uh, the set Kaiser comp as well if the center is banned away as now DRX. What is it going to be? The Galio to be taken away. And uh, Kuro has liked uh, going towards the Galio recently. So not too bad, not too bad. Galio going to be buffed a little bit in the next patch, but not in this one, 10.7 is where he's slated to get a bit of an extra shield on his ultimate. It's KT looking for the center button. We'll see whether they find it. Uh, if we remember back to uh, Deft's last center game, he did about 37% of his team's damage as the Zoe is going to get banned here. This is what happens when Chovy's on your team. 
as uh, DRX just looking for that center button. And I think they should be able to find it. Unless they put the priority Unless, on the Orn. Yeah, they, they could potentially put the priority on the Orn, but they also do like Varus against Senna. I'm a little surprised to see the Varus actually be one, which I, I, I was expecting that KT would be the ones to pick up Senna and then they would respond with it. So now KT are the ones who can get Orn, they can get Senna if they want, but obviously the Senna would fare a little bit rough against the Varus as Jarvan is being hovered right now. Yeah, it looks like it'll probably be locked away. Bono certainly is one of our junglers that has the uh, thinner champion pool, and he wants to get on the highest priority jungler at the moment on this current patch, and of course his comfort pick as well. Majority of his games have certainly been on that champion. We can't fault them for picking that one up, but certainly shows some weakness here for KT as far as their draft phase is concerned, if they have to hide their jungler this much. He's played 10 games on the Jarvan so far, and his next highest is Elise on four. As uh, Soan, once again, going to be locking away the Orn. I believe suffered his first loss on the Orn in that last game. We're looking to try and rectify that situation here in game two. Well, Dragon X now hovering the set. This is able to be flexed three ways. Yeah. And so. uh, we saw, you know, Nogari showing that uh, set works pretty well into the Orn, but I think that might have had more to do with Nogari than it did with the Orn. As uh, DRX can flex it like you were talking about towards the bottom side of the map. Chovy could just lock away the Thresh here for Carrier once again, and then they'll have that Varus Thresh lane, which they love so much, bottom side. So wouldn't mind that as well. As uh, Silas could also come in. That is another big pick that... Uh, our LCK teams love into the Orn, but it is going to be Olaf as uh, Pyoshik and Bono. Pretty one-dimensional when it comes to their jungle picks so far this series. And Pyoshik being on the Olaf, I mean, I, 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 I suppose it removes any sort of need for him to do anything by himself. He's able to just constantly power farm his Olaf and then show up whenever his team needs him, I guess. But it really is perplexing. You're counterpicking yourself into the Jarvan Olaf not super good against the Orn, even though the Ragnarok can resist the CC that Orn ends up bringing. You're just, you're getting outscaled all around. Now, the set is paired there on Dragon X's side. They are going to need heavy magic damage dealers. And I'm trying to think what Chovy would possibly want to pick blind. Obviously, we know that Azir is potentially on the menu. LeBlanc is something that I think is in people's minds, but with KT being also beefy and having the lockdown, it would be a little bit surprising, but this would be a, a bit akin to the APK draft of earlier if LeBlanc would end up coming in. Yeah, actually, um, I like Dragon X sort of banning around uh, a Azir pickup here for themselves. So if Kuro does lock in the Azir, then they flex the Varus to the mid lane and pick an AD carry for Deft. Otherwise, they pick the Azir for themselves and uh, there aren't too many uh, Azir counters still left on the board as LeBlanc is the last KT ban. And so DRX, if they ban the Azir, then obviously they want a different mid lane pick for Chovy. And I'm not entirely sure what that's going to be. Well, Kossadin was actually banned away. And There's you know what, I, 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 gotta, I gotta give it to him. His avatar actually looks a lot more menacing when the photo is inverted. Yeah? It you actually it so? looks like it's coming for you, yeah. It's a bit frightening, I'm not gonna it lie. Is. I, I don't know, there's something about it. As LeBlanc was banned away by KT. Yep, and the rumble was the response, so now five seconds to go aiming, just gonna lock away his Ezreal most likely there towards the bottom side. So watch Dragon X pick up something like a Azir Braum or something like that. Braum to block the uh, Ornhorn would make a little bit of sense, but I think Azir is a no-brainer for Dragon X right here. Well, Braum is being picked up, and if Azir does come in, yes, he has the Shurima Sokol, yes, he does have the repositioning, but there's no reliable way to do anything to Ezreal inside of these team fights. so... You start thinking about other mid laners. I mean, Ziggs doesn't look that bad here. The question is, would Chovy blind the poke. Ziggs? You're exactly yeah, they would right. Have, yeah, they would have a lot of poke with that. They'd have a lot of setup as well. 
because you need some sort of a long range champion. Alternatively, you need to just go super ham at the opponent. And okay, I guess they're gonna they're gonna lock in Silas. Yeah, there's the Silas. Now this Silas can be flexed around as well because Set can be played in the mid lane like you were talking about, three way flex. And uh, Silas can head up towards the top lane to try and get that counter pick action happening against the Orn. But now the comp is face up and KT get to answer wherever they would like to. And they are thinking about the Azir now that that Varus flex into mid lane is gone. This is definitely a bit of a more dicey draft here by Dragon X. Yeah, Varus, I feel like KT is way more well-rounded now. KT are so much more well-rounded across the board. The Azir and the Ezreal is going to obviously stand tall. It's going to be really hard to get to them with the Cataclysm, with the Orn. And Azir should be able to get to Death Cap this game, just the nature of the two team compositions. So that should be a Death Crown completed. Trinity Fusion on the Ezreal and... This is very scary. This, this is not the kind of draft that I think Dragon X would want, but there's a lot of individual skill expression that Dragon X can have with this especially, type of composition. Especially in the mid lane, man. Uh, Chovy's Silas has so many good ultimates to utilize. Silas has always loved Cataclysm based on its scaling that it has available to it. And uh, when you use that AP scaling of the hijack, you can basically one-shot people with the Cataclysm. Uh, True Shot Barrage isn't bad either, but Emperor's Divide and Call of the Forge God are incredible for the Silas. And he might be able to pick up a couple of them if we get to late game team fights. So uh, look to see whether Chovy can have a good effect on this match. Not to mention looking towards topside and seeing whether Doran can actually utilize the set much like Noggery did against Cuve early, earlier in the day, which made it look like a counter pick, even though I know it's not. Yeah, and this is really interesting because I think that Dragon X has a worse draft, but I think the manner in which the draft is conducted and just coming off of that game one, the fact that it's Chovy that's on the Silas, I think if the invert were different, I think if it was Chovy on the set and the Silas up in top lane, I would feel a little bit differently. Think, I think Dragon X is going to win, Alice. I'm going I'm to go against the draft. I don't do this wow, that Wow, that's often. crazy. You don't. You actually, you even picked against Dom one when they were up against a wildcard team based on a bad draft. So uh, this is a big deal. And uh, betting on Dragon X when the chips are down is uh, sometimes a very dangerous maneuver. But we'll see whether Dragon X are going to get the clean 2-0 against a powered up KT coming off eight wins in a row. And I think when you're a team that's on a winning streak like this, it's harder for you to tilt after one loss, right? If you're on like a two match losing streak and then you lose a game one, it's much harder to have the motivation to get yourself back in the game. But KT have set themselves up to have that control. So I don't know whether it's going to be enough here against Dragon X, but Dragon X is still going to have to come out with a really good performance here this game in order to overcome both KT's momentum and the draft. Yeah. Aiming, even having the teleport down there in bot lane, Kyria. And Def just looking for whatever they can. They were trying to go Ooh. in for some pokes. Tushin misses the anchor. And yeah, so Dredge Line could have actually been a death, but doesn't actually land. You can see Pyoshik going to be starting enemy red side. As Chovy here in this mid lane, just going to be uh, farming things out against Kuro. I feel like Chovy and uh, Showmaker are probably our best melee mid players in uh, the LCK, and it's largely to do with just how well uh, they manage to farm against ranged opponents. As Phase Breaker comes down, Doran was looking for that one, gets the 1-2 punch, and so on, is not allowed to head towards this minion wave by the looks of things. And I have a feeling he's going to lose all of these melee creeps as well, as uh, Abscond is going to miss. That is a unlikely mistake by Chovy just yeah. there. Especially given the proximity. You could basically breathe on him and hit him there. Yeah. So, definitely not very normal, as, okay, that one's going to clip. Yeah, lands that one. Nicely done. Gets uh, his Conqueror to proc also, and Kuro down to relatively low health. Going to have to eat through some of these biscuits. He's already eaten both of his potions. Currently ticking down with his last one. Well, it's just a little surprising what is happening so far. Bono is 
looking to make something happen, and it, this is always peculiar. When the team comp that doesn't have an obligation to get ahead actively looks to make plays, like Garvin in this game doesn't need to do anything aggressive. He doesn't need to get the ball rolling. Now, Def down here, he is at about half HP, has heal, they have exhaust as well on the Braum. Garvin obviously in close proximity. They might try to make this happen as oh. Pyotrick's on the other side of the map. So it's not hard to deduce, Garvin probably is around here. Yeah, you can see aiming, actually dashing forward there is Tucson. Going to get a bit of a shield with his Titan's Wrath is aiming down to about 150. Bono thinking about getting his opportunity. If Deft and Carrier step too far forward, you know that the Jarvan's coming in, but he's going to assume that they're going to head back underneath their turret, and uh, Dragon X just playing defensively enough to stave off the pressure. Meanwhile, up in top lane, one of the more bizarre initial purchases by Morn. I, I think that's the first time I've ever, I've ever seen that. He built what? boots. Yeah, that's weird. I've never seen boots built for... I, I, obviously, I've seen cloth armor into Ninja Tabby, but yep. I, I've never seen the boots built first. But obviously, he's probably just doing that as a means to try to walk out of the Haymaker and just space better against the set. And Kyoshik, I mean, he is... He's just farming, man. That's, that's all he has to do. And even that, he's still not landing on the right side of the map. Obviously, the Raptor camp about to respawn right now. Probably going to locate Jarvan soon, but there's no gank potential in top. He's going to come in here, get the bad news. The Raptor camp's already gone. Yep, might look to the Krug camp because that's the only one that is available. And he might put down a control ward there in uh, the closer brush towards the red buff. This one can last a relatively long time, but players have figured out that our teams do like placing that one down as Jovi finds another abscond onto Kuro and a massive amount of damage there as the Kingslayer will even it out but you can see the Sand Soldiers able to help Kuro even the trade but when you have inherent sustain in your kit you're okay with taking HP trades like this if you're Jovi. Yes. Totally fine with doing so Doran can just get a recall off right now such a sizable mini wave does end up getting crashed on Orn now it is really worrisome. This is an extremely stable early game. You have Pyoshik playing on the left-hand side of the map for reasons completely unbeknownst to me. And now you have a freeze happening by Deft and Karia down here in bot lane. They're doing this because Olaf is in close proximity, but Bono now gonna give away his location by hitting the Scryer. Everyone knows where he is. And the unfortunate thing for DRX is they rely on getting a soul this game. They need to get dragons, they need to pressure KT through that, and if DRX gets the first one of the game, it's obviously bad news bears for trying to get towards the soul. Yep, maybe thinking about letting a Cloud Drake go because it doesn't really mean as much, and then taking the rest of the Drakes. Seems like it could be a decent idea. Five minutes until the Ocean Drake is going to spawn, and we have either Mountain or Infernal spawning on the map. Both not bad at all for either team. Of course, Mountain Soul would certainly suit KT very, very well, uh, given their tanky boys that they will have. And you can see that Bono is building towards the Cinderhog this time around. Not going to be going into Warrior Enchant or anything like that. It'll be the classic Cinderhog into Gargoyle Stoneplate to be that burly frontline and give space for Kuro and Aiming to do damage. Koshik coming in here on the right-hand side. I mean, he's, he's basically even with Jarvan in terms of farm, but Jarvan has applied a lot more indirect pressure so far in this game. Chovy is about where you would expect a Silas to be against the Azir. Depth yeah. Carrier can't really achieve anything down here in bot lane. As Tucson just doing a bit of friendly banter with his former teammate there, some emote spam. As uh, Tucson will have that dredge line back available very, very soon. In fact, has it now. Aiming, gonna get slowed down as Dredgeline lands, but Carrier does have Stand Beside Me to get himself out of there. And now the Onhorn has been blown. So on throws it in the wrong direction because he knows that he has nowhere to go, and First Blood goes to Doran on the set. You can see that Jarvan is trying to respond with pressure on the right-hand side. Ezreal and Nautilus took a really heavy trade. Death! Not gonna be able to actually steal away the red buff. So, bit of a close call, but aiming 
is going to be able to get ahead now. Going to get himself a turret plate. Deft is going to miss, I think, eight CS in total in terms of experiences. Let's just take a look at how this all transpired as, okay, well, that was really interesting. That The, the flash forward superplex, so on, not going to be able to do anything about that. Really good proactivity right there by Doron. Almost has his Blade of the Ruin King. Whoa, that's a flash. Flash for flash, bottom side of the map, deft and aiming. As Archovi has himself a Emperor's Divide here in this mid lane, but does lose a turret plate to Kuro. Well. Stuff's Doron. happening, man. Yeah, stuff, stuff is indeed happening. We got one kill. Ocean Drake coming up in two and a half minutes. Cinder Hulk on Pyoshik is interesting uh, as the initial item yeah you know, we've seen we've seen this uh, a few times but generally it is warrior enchant for a little bit more aggression early game i don't mind it we'll see where he decides to go with his build next probably still going to be something like a black cleaver as uh, he heads on over to shelly and he's going to start that one up as uh, you can see deft and carrier are moving up the mid lane aiming and tucson still down here bottom side and will be second on the rotation towards the Herald. See whether they can utilize this in order to get themselves plates bottom lane. And you can see Deft is just going to happily pick up that wave, understanding that they will be able to get this Rift Herald for free, given bottom lane proximity uh, to that particular area. So not bad from DRX as Doran just moves over, collects his plate gold, and will continue getting vision where he needs it and uh, keep pushing his advantage. He's uh, very close to his Blade of the Rune King as item number one. And I actually feel like this does really help the set into on matchup for the set now that that item has been buffed. Yeah. He's also, he, I mean, he gets the attack speed, so it converts into things. It also smoothens his build. Obviously, the discrepancy between original opinions then begins to differ on the second item. Yep. NA, and even earlier tonight, we saw Black Cleaver was purchased second on the set so not opting into the trinity force yep seen uh, a couple of trinity forces uh picked up uh second uh, i believe it was a couple of days ago now or maybe last week as bono lying in wait kyoshik is here as well i have a feeling they know what is happening here as uh kt will shove this wave in and uh so on looking very scared of doran right here but has no real reason to be in the lane right now as doran clears out that minion wave very easily Bono spent a lot of time here towards the bottom side as Kerry's going to clear out some vision. Tucson lying in wait. But I don't think the Braum is going to be a target that they can uh, get on top of anytime soon as Deft gets over here. He doesn't want to push too far up and aiming is clearing these minions maybe a little bit too fast for Bono's liking. And the early game is just really slow right now. So we're just waiting for an explosive team fight. These control wards granting a lot of vision as apparently as i say that the entire map got lit up so yeah that's cool lots of value and the thing about those control wards is they don't just show the the area that they're granting vision over they also show where jarvan well obviously they, they show where jarvan isn't but what i mean is that it lets you know that jarvan isn't on the left side of the map at all and that's a lot of valuable information because it, it affects how Chovy maybe plays out his mid lane phase or the bot lane just chooses to take trades and whatnot knowing that Jarvan is always hovering around the right hand side. You can see this Ocean Drake is going to go for free over to KT. You saw Pyoshik was in the area but uh, decided not to do anything about it as Infernal Soul will be happening here this game. Both of these teams very happy to pick that one up if they can as Doran gets himself yet another plate on the top side of the map. Might even be able to find another one here as uh, gets knocked up with a Searing Charge. Ornhorn comes down as he's been lit on fire. Haymaker comes in, but Pyoshik is just going to put Shelly over the wall and say, so on, sorry, mate, no more trading for you as Doran's going to finish off this turret. Yeah, so they, they're they going to get all of the turret plates onto Doran. He is so far ahead. ahead. 2,000. Oh, my God. I believe that that is 1,999 more than one, Alice. Oh my god, you're right! Yeah, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I did that Your mathematical a skills are pretty damn good. Are you Thank using you. the calculator because you're at home? All I can't right. tell because I'm not on the desk with you. You caught me. Oh, that's not fair. I thought you were really, <laughs> really cool. It turns out you weren't as cool as I thought. Uh, don't I feel like a fool? 
so I'm going to clear out his minion wave. He's also feeling a little bit like a fool as uh, he threw his ultimate down. But uh, there was a jungler there and then a big Shelly lady. And uh, she took down his turret. Not great news. First turret blood going over to Dragon X. And now maybe the stats are not going to lie once again as Chovy, his hijacked ultimate was running out. So he uses it to smash down these minions. Yep. And will do so again uh, with the rest of his abilities. One of the things that I, I don't really like here is that Chobi is going into the protobelt on the Silas, even though there's been a very stable and slow early and mid-game transition. And so in instances like this, even though the protobelt has the utility with the dash, it just feels so lackluster. Eventually, you hit protobelt, then you get Zanya's Hourglass, and things just begin to feel really bad as you get stuck on being the same champion for so long, waiting for third item completion, whereas just maybe accepting that the game wasn't really going your way and going straight into Ludens would just be a better choice in terms of damage and overall just better cohesion with his teammates. As Doron, I mean, he's up here in top lane and we just keep getting ping pong. Now, this is the really scary thing, Atlas. Is KT is down 2,000 oh, gold. Does have flash available, gets himself out of the Cataclysm as the True Shot Barrage was sailing by. And now no flash for the jungler, two and a half minutes on the Drake. Yeah. KT is down in gold, but their, their champions are going to be so valuable at this team fight. Now, fortunately for Dragon X, KT has rolled arguably the, the, the worst dragons that they could have up until this point. The Cloud yeah. Dragon, not going to really have any effect in the next team fight. The Ocean Dragon, not really going to have an effect in this next team fight at all. Whereas Mountain or Infernal, may maybe it would it would do a little bit more. And so, this is Dragon X's time to shine. And interestingly enough, Infernal is the best Drake I think that they could have got. Because once they're on to KT, they need to kill them in one fell yeah. swoop. That's what their comp does. They don't care about a Mountain Soul or Mountain Dragons. Because Ezreal and Azir will just poke them down. We'll just completely keep withering them. So, this is really good luck by Dragon X in this game. Yeah, and if Dragon X can stack up four Infernal Drakes and then get themselves to the Infernal Soul, it's going to feel really, really good, especially if they're able to accelerate the lead that they already have into map control around this bottom side. They still have a minute and a half before they need to do that as Def finds himself control ward as he moves towards this mid lane. True Shot Barrage is going to miss for the moment, just scouting things out by the looks of things, checking to see whether that blue buff is available. As Chovy moves into the darkness in Fog of War on the bottom side of the map, Deft and Carrier also moving down to catch the wave bottom side also. But KT have had a lot of good vision in the enemy jungle bottom side of the map so far this game, and it might be that they can utilize that to just keep stacking these dragons as the game goes on. Cool, Carrier just sidesteps the dredge line, has to flash as the depth charge comes in. The Crow not going to be able to find enough damage here as they siege into this mid turret. Chovy, Proto Belt, clears out the minion wave quite nicely, and he's going to look for a back timing as well. Teleport will be available as our Infernal Drake will be spawning at 30 in 30 seconds time, and Pyoshik has just taken the Rift Herald for free. Yeah, he got the Rift Herald for free. Teleport coming in from Chovy. Has the stopwatch for this team fight. Gets all of his corrupting potions replenish. Azir's gonna be at full mana. This is the do or die team fight. Now, unfortunately, for set, he does not have the black cleaver. So Orn's really not in that bad of a spot in, in, in terms of pound per pound value. Silas gets the Nautilus ultimate though. That is very scary. Well, he's going to use it as well. Gets the knock up here onto Tucson. Takes a fair bit of damage, but Aftershock so far. Oh! Five man cataclysm there as everyone's in the baby cage, but the Unbreakable's oh! going to stop the Ornhorn. And now they're trying to turn it on to Aiming. Chobi taking a lot of damage. Mystic Shot finally goes wide, but Aiming is really putting a dent into Chobi here. Kingslayer gets, gets him his health and the Abduct is going to get him to safety. But now the mid laner way too low to fight this dragon fight. DRX do not want to give this up though. They, they really don't want to give this up. And this is so scary right now. Carrier. Oh, Carrier. Oh, his life away. Oh. Bono in trouble as Doran gets into the backline depth. Free hitting as Zoan goes golden. Emperor's Divide is going to land, but Doran has the Haymaker to keep him alive. And in goes the Olaf. Just a terrifying force is aiming. He's going to have his Mystic Shot flashed by Depth, who's showing oh. who the Alpha 80 carry is. And Dragon X completely turned this around with a hero play by Doran. 
with the s I mean, that was an F5 right into the back line or an RKO, whatever you want to call it. They completely turned the fight on its head. And like you were saying, they can't give up the Infernal Dragon because it would, it would bring KT to soul point. It would give them so much extra damage on the Ezreal and the Azir. A little bit perplexing. Def didn't get that turret. But let's take a look at this one more time. Karia, he says my life for ire as he goes in there <laughs> with Braum. And Bono just couldn't do anything. And interestingly enough, Goron didn't use Face Breaker, even yeah, though he waited. had it. He waited so long, killing the uh, uh, Bono on the Jarvan without using the Face Breaker stun, which he had the angle for. And the patience paid off because he then got a lot more value out of it. Even saved his flash throughout all of this. As Kyoshik, it's more, sort of like an LSB damn day as the Olaf just <laughs> charged down the remaining members on KT. And that was a Hail Mary team fight that I think if you play that out like a hundred times or something, it goes to KT the majority. Yeah, and you can see Kuro actually did a hell of a lot of damage to that fight, but it just wasn't enough. It was the fact that uh, Dragon X were able to get into the right positions and eliminate the right targets at the right time. And I like that you, uh, you mentioned, you know, Carrier's sacrifice here because it looked so silly. Him just walking into five people by himself, that it honestly paid off with uh, Pioshik not even having to flash. I can't believe that, as he just had a free ride into the back line because all of the aggro was taken by the rest of his teammates. Yeah, and everything is really just working out for Dragon X in this game. I don't want to count KT out of it though, and I know that sounds so bizarre probably for some viewers. Dragon X are ahead. Five and a half thousand gold with an Infernal Dragon. But the ornaments are going to start to invalidate that once they start coming in. Azir Ezreal protected by the Jarvan, Orn, and Nautilus. They're really scary. We saw glimpses of it in that team fight where Dragon X can run out of fuel. And if they do run out of fuel, Azir and Ezreal will entirely clean up. And we've seen this time and time again in the LCK. Sometimes gold leads don't really paint the full picture. If Dragon X gets to a second Infernal, obviously that's a lot of hidden stats that isn't readily being shown in terms of items, but it will be felt in terms of damage. And KT, they have to hold on. They, they're, they're looking at trying to go the distance, 35, 37 minute game, getting to four or five items across everyone, ornament upgrades, and then trying to get to Mountain or oh, Infernal Bono. themselves. Oh, Chovy messing that one up just a little bit. Uh, a little bit early on the boot back on the ram. But still, just experimenting with his R button that uh, was hijacked by his opposition. You can see KT move on over and will be able to claim the prize of out of turret after Chovy messed that one up. Well, I, I, you know what? I think he actually kicked Chovy out of the, out of the seat, or Chovy oh, out of the no. seat. That's what yeah, happened. Hopefully, hopefully he's kicked him out now. It's now Doran thinking about trying to get in, aiming, arcane shift, and the flash. Gigantic showstopper into the back line, and aiming's just eliminated instantly. Stopwatch from Tucson, but it's pretty late as Joby gets into the back line. Exhausts a plenty over there as well as another two-man face breaker comes in. Tucson under the turret. Deft is going to su survive for so long, but it's a sun turret. The turret has defected on Dragon X's <laughs> side, and now Soan is looking to try and escape, but he's not going to. It's an ace, and Dragon X once again look fantastic. Dragon X win the team fight five for two. They're going to reward themselves with the mid tier one. And here's the thing. You look at a lot of their items, and I want you to just pay attention to it after the recall for Dragon X, as well as the, the items for KT. Kobe isn't changing. He's, he's going to have the Zani's Hourglass completion, which he already has Stopwatch, he already has Seekers fully stacked. So he's getting a little bit of CDR, a little bit more AP. It doesn't change how Silas conducts himself. Set either. Goron comes in with the Flash, RKO, and the Sun Turret, like you were talking about, just dealing insane amounts of damage. No one dealt with it. There was no minions tanking aggro. And even though Death went one for one, he eventually was brought down. So on, running towards that turret, but the turret wasn't interested. Nope, didn't really mind. And also, when it's focused on Doran, it's not doing enough damage. Kyoshi cleans it up pretty comfortably here as we have a look at Doran versus Bono. Bono's just going to walk away, aiming, getting piercing arrow to the face, but this is not lethality of Arrow, so it doesn't hurt too much. But Deft is starting to do a hell of a lot of damage. Has himself his Runan's Hurricane now. And uh, this 4,000 gold lead feels like it's just going to be extending 10 seconds until the Infernal Drake and so on's top lane without teleport. Well, it feels bad. Giant's Belt and Chain Vest 
was picked up by Goron, so he's going to be going Dead Man Slate next, Righteous Glory on the Olaf. Sheen now picked up as well on the Silas. And yep. so he will be going into, I guess, Lich Bane. Yeah, and Lich Bane's actually going to be a big damage spike uh, for Chovy as well, so we'll see when he's going to be able to pick that item up as Tucson loses his depth charge. Well, actually, it gets copied and uh, hijacked here by Chovy. As uh, Dragon X just now trying to get control of this barren area and trying to bully KT away from their red buff. But there's the dredge line. Has depth charge available for Chovy, but he goes golden with his stopwatch and dashes out of the way. But they do manage to get Doran's uh, teleport. Oh! And now a fair bit of damage. Bono's going to get knocked up. Oh, the Haymaker is huge. As there's the knockoff. Empress Divide goes absolutely nowhere. As now you've got the Olaf running straight into the back line. Everyone on KT will melt. And Dragon X, they can either take some Nexus turrets, take some inhibitor turrets, or just head straight to the Baron. And DRX are going straight towards the Baron. And what a day! We have had here, Atlas, another almost 10,000 gold lead. What happened to the LCK? We've had what some a... stomps, man. It's crazy. I, I left for a little while, and then now, now I come back to this. Yeah, everyone was intimidated. They're like, oh, no, the, he keeps talking about the lull state. Oh, we must, we must stop this. Let's just finish games very, very quickly. Dragon X certainly were one of those teams, by the looks of things. Yes. As this was actually looking really good. You can see that when Ezreal and Azir are guarded and they're able to maintain their phalanx, things actually do look a little bit dicey for Dragon X. Bono goes in and oh, just barely getting locked up, but it didn't matter. Haymaker dealing so much damage. King Slayer on Chovy as well. Going in there with the ultimate Olaf just dishing out so much damage and KT just really fell apart once again dragon x managed to edge them out in terms of mechanical display yeah. now blade yeah I, this game is really just running away from them three minutes until the next infernal Pioshek stealing that blue buff away just for good measure yep just for fun and uh Pioshek, in the meantime four zero and ten on the olap it's uh, certainly one of his best performances that we've seen so far cinder hulk olaf no worries at all even has a Righteous Glory just to allow him to close the distance even faster. And speaking of which, Doran has himself his Dead Man's Plate for all of that extra movement speed. 10,000 gold, very, very close. And this Baron buff power play is only going to continue. At this point, it looks like Dragon X... I mean, they're, they're fine to play this safe and slow and steady. They can get to the third Infernal Dragon. It's just two minutes away. That'll be 12% amp to all of their stats. Yep. And Chovy up here in top lane is super big right now as Doron down here in bottom. Yep, death Find as well. He's uh, doing a hell of a lot of damage. Looking for his uh, Bloodthirster is his next item. More of the, uh, I guess, less hybrid aspect of the Varus. Often we see a Rage Blade picked up in this instance, but he's going for more physical damage. Uh, in the Bloodthirster, just making sure that he's as safe as possible. He's aiming, not able to defend this turret. Siege minion, just a little bit too high range as he's looking for the last Mystic Shot and finds it to finally finish off that pesky minion. But he'd done his job, as now top lane is being seed. Doran's on the bottom side. It's the true 1-3-1 one, one, as DRX look to try and break the base. Oh, well, too soon. Have to be a bit careful here as Trovi gets in with the abscond. Goes gold in there as well. Depth charge onto aiming as he gets himself the hell out of there. Oh, Bono getting taken down very low, but the Winter's Bite is going to miss there from Carrier. They bought enough space though, and that is going to mean a dead inhibitor here in the mid lane and will likely be followed by the top side as well. Well, mid inhibitor going down. They're going to have to make sure that they do something else, though. They do have a bit of time still left on the barrel. If they can raise the bottom one in addition to the mid, that'll be a pretty good win. As you can see, Dev... Oh what? my god, Amy just melts. Dev grabs two kills instantly out of nowhere. The turret's going to fall down. So on. He's going to be the next one. Yoshik picks up that. As Meanwhile, in the back line, Kuro is murdered by the set. And now Nexus turrets will be the next on the menu for Dragon X. They didn't want to get to their third Infernal Drake. They want to win the game before 28 minutes. And they're going to do it. So this is going to be the Nexus falling at 9.07 p.m. here in Korea.
Yeah, this and, is uh, the fastest series. This is four hours earlier than yesterday's finish time, by the way, guys. Four hours. Wow. Just insane. Dragon X with a shellacking of KT. And we thought that this was going to be better than it was, but I don't know, man. That, that, was, that was a very, very fast game. And Dragon X made KT look like they should have been on the other side of the bracket. Yeah, and, and Dragon X, I mean, we said this coming into the series. Dragon X, Gen G, and T1 are going to be the Elite 3 for KT to try to take down. And this is their first encounter. We obviously have the Telecom War coming up later on in this split, yep. and that's going to be dicey for them. And this was how their the first start of their split started. Three losses to T1, Dragon X, and Gen G. And they went on a tear against almost everyone else up until this point, and now it managed to stop right here. So the win streak is broken. I don't think that means that it's not time to get excited because this game could have gone an entirely different way. That Infernal Dragon fight, which we're probably going to see a replay of, really does just go KT's way the mass majority of the time. And if that's the case, they probably win the game off of it because that yeah. was such a big tempo swing. It's such a better draft. And I know I predicted Dragon X to win in spite of the draft, but we didn't actually see any of the reasoning for that come to fruition because early in mid game, super stable. Bono yeah. was able to keep up. KT was doing a really good job in all the laning phases. Obviously, so on up in top lane, died a bit, gave up some turret plates, but down in bot lane, they were finding a lot of success against Death and Caria, which is not something a lot of teams are able to do. Yeah, I actually feel like the bottom lane played very well from KT, and that's the, the lane that we've been giving a lot of props to, right? Like, Doran starting a lot of these fights off very, very well, but also the combination of Doran and Kyoshik this game was just insane. The fact that the set runs in, the Olaf is already there, running through Emperor's Divides. You saw in that uh, dragon fight that you were talking about, Kyoshik went straight through the uh, Azir ultimate and killed two people after taking all of that damage. Just straight up did not care. Yeah, this was a, a really nice display of just teamwork out of Dragon X tonight yeah. in these two games. And I mean, what more could you really ask for as well, we come out and watch this? Yeah, it's what we wanted to see out of Dragon X here as well, because I think that a lot of people were expecting Dragon X T1 and Gen G to be our Korean teams, right? Our three teams that we're looking uh, towards to send to Worlds to go international and represent us effectively. And uh, after performances like this, I feel better talking about Dragon X in that uh, that line of thinking, right? Because they really did look like a step below Gen G and T1 in their matchups. And while that is still probably the case, this is definitely a good sign. Yeah, absolutely is. As KT, you can see the Azir damage was very strong. And Bono almost had that hero cataclysm to the left of blue buff, if you remember, but no yeah, sand five, soldiers. Yeah, man, that was insane. No sand soldiers able to get in there. Caria blocked the Orn ultimate from being able to do anything, and aiming just wasn't there yet. That could have just been a, an execution, basically, inside of that Darwin wall. Yeah, but wasn't to be the case. 15,000 gold was the lead in the end at 28 minutes into the game. 27.54 was the clock. And uh, we've had some really fast games today. I can't believe it. The polar opposite to yesterday's games, which was uh, the longest day of my life. I think it was just insane. This time around, I'm wondering when the next series is. Like, aren't we going to the next one? That's That's got to be it, right? Like, uh... <laughs> are we just are we just gonna play Gen G versus Sandbox like right now, which is our first match for tomorrow? I mean, you know what? I, mean, I think that we can squeeze it in here. So I think we, we may, may as well. well just hit them up and ask oh. if we can we can get to that. You have some good games coming up as well. I mean, the the last match on Saturday, Dragon X versus Gen G. Oh, that's a spicy one, especially now that Dragon X looks so much better. And KT versus APK. <laughs> Who's yep. gonna win that one on Saturday? Not entirely sure. KT coming off a loss and uh, APK coming off a two-match winning streak. But let's focus back on this series. Uh, we will find out who picked up player of the game. See whether I look silly with my Pyoshik vote as uh, Doran is going to pick up the player of the game. His uh, 
fight's start, his, uh, sorry, his initiation was definitely fantastic. And uh, I think it's back-to-back -back Doran MVPs, if I'm uh, not mistaken. No, so, Carrier picked Carrier, up the first Carrier. one. Yep. I think my so, brain is uh, just straight up broken. So I voted for Doran this game. Oh, were you the swing is I, the question. I, that's what I'm, well, I am literally set, but am I the swinger? I mm -hmm. have not, well, we're going to find out. You may just have been. And As, honestly, uh, this was it. This was the hero play. Combined that with face some other... breaker was actually really intelligent. Yeah. He held on to it, killed the Jarvan, and they, they turned this entire team fight on its head. Death was so aggro on this Varus as well. Chains coming out here, locking up the Ezreal. And again, Doron, he set this play up as well. Toby eventually comes in for a flank, gets exhausted, just doing so much va value. Karia does manage to go golden, which does lock up some of the attention. Even says to Jarvan, you're coming with me. Yeah, and he did. As uh, someone does fall down in the end here, and Dragon X, I think this was the clincher of a team fight. This was the opportunity for KT to show, oh my god, I am the silly boy. You're not Le Swinger. You are Le sitting next to an idiot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you voted for the old off the farm all game. No, he did. He showed up, though. He, he, he held showed the up. first blood. And yeah, also, I, I, he gave it mostly to Pyoshik because finally he did something you know to what? prove his worth, right? Yeah. He, he cleaned up the team fights when the enemy's kneecaps were broken and their arms were displaced. <laughs> Congratulations, Alice. Hey, that's in true Viking style, all right? I was just <laughs> applauding his ability to, to, to act like the law. You know, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely feel a bit silly. I'm, uh, I'm going a little bit red right here. But thankfully, you're holding <laughs> my hand in the picture, allowing me to feel a little bit better as we are going to send it over to the interview. So here's Jisung with some translation. Thank you very much, guys. This is Season of the Universe Translation, and we are having a video chat interview with Karia Doran from Bjorks taking down KT Rolster, the team that was on a 9-match win streak. So, let's hear from the players of the game. How are you guys feeling right now? Ah, uh, First of all, KT was on a really big win streak, and DRX, we are not having a very the best form, but 2-2-0 victory is a big relief, and I'm really happy. I'm happy that we won. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning of the round two, you guys were a bit shaky, but today you guys looked so promising and the best performance in round two so far. Especially regarding that your opponent was KT, the team was on the best momentum. Did you guys go for some special training or any activities to improve your performance after having a bit of a losing trick in the beginning of round two just players ourselves felt a lot of things what what did you guys feel me i was like over confident yeah, I mean, you guys had a very fantastic round one, so that's quite understandable. And what about you, Doran? What was your take on the beginning of round two? Well, I didn't really feel anything. I was just like, ah, oh, sad that we lost game. Then let's go back to the game today. Sonin and Thresh. So tell us about the mid lane pick first. We were having two Kazanin games today overall from Showmaker and then Chovi. Was that affected by the Daman game or was that prepared in advance? Uh... Well, Chovy was the one who kind of picked that champion, and Chovy's not here with us, so we're not sure. We, I mean, honestly, we don't, we have no idea about the mid lane pick. Maybe Deft has any idea? Definitely, he's the god of draft, so he, he knows everything. 
Yeah, theft with eight years of experience would know, but rookies, they don't have much information of the draft overall. But your performance in Thrush was so on point. How was your performance in that champion overall? How would you like to rate your performance today? I think I did well on Thrush. <laughs> So, in game wise, Ksadin was picking up all the kills in late game. So, like, how much did you contribute that to that kind of late game scale? I think I didn't really share any credit. And the opponent made was Rumble, I guess. Kasadin would have a very hard laning phase, but he did so well kind of enjoying those laning phase, so I think Chovy did a lot of work. And Kanki today, during the commentary, he said a lot of people expected a lot more from Doran, but you weren't playing up to the expectation, but today, finally, Doran pulled off the best play he could do. Yeah, so how would you like to rate your performance day out of 10? No, 10. 10 out of 10. Was that all you got today? Like, what you played today was all you got? Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I've shown everything. <laughs> Lyra, any questions? Mm, not really. I mean, Keria, you dyed your hair, right? Yeah. It looks good on you. I, mean, I can't really ask any question about in-game things to the players. So, taking down KT Rolfer, this kind of make it up to be a very bit of a shaky start of round two, finally. And your next opponent will be Genji. So, how are you guys going to prepare for that series? Carry out. Any last words for that series? Well, in round one, we fell to Genji and T1. And in round two, we fell to T1. And Genji is a really strong team, so I want to get our revenge and also keep preparing our best and do our best in the remaining of the split. So Doran, a player who showed all he got. So, any last message for your fans? Well, recently, I've been really lucky, so I picked up so many POGs, so I'm really happy, so I hope I can have another lucky day and win another POG. Thank you! So this will be the end of the interview with the players of the game, Keria, who are from DRX, and I'm going to pass it back to our casters. Thank you! Thank you so much, Jisun, for the interview translation. And no thanks to you, Lyra, for having absolutely no questions for the players. I know Caster Jun kind of put him on the spot, but come on, man. You have nice looking hair now that you got it dyed. Is that, that's not good enough. All right. Well, you, you know, you're going to have to, I, come on. You, you, you gave the MVP vote to Pioshek. <laughs> All right. Let's... Yeah, okay. So maybe I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> That's a good point. Thanks for bringing that one back up. I was. I thought you were here holding my hand. Can't you see the stream right now? You're here holding my hand. And you threw me <laughs> under the bus. Oh, it's not fair. It's totally Dragon fine. X are going to move to one match away from T1 and Gen G with that victory over KT, but they are a game behind. So it might be. Sorry, they're they're a game ahead because uh, they do have a couple of extra losses in that column. So uh, we'll see what the uh, result is going to be of Gen.G and T1's next matches. As uh, KT, unfortunately, that eight wins in a row has been cancelled out and nullified. And now there's a dirty 1L in that slot. And still, they are pretty solidly in that fourth place, but Darmon hot on their heels. Couple of match losses, uh, sorry, match wins behind. As our t tomorrow's matches will be Gen.G versus Sandbox. Should be an easy one for Gen.G. Griffin versus T1, an easy one for T1, and then Afrika versus Darmon. Who knows what the heck's going to happen?
Yeah, that one's, I think, going to be the closest of the night. I imagine that the first two series are going to be complete blowouts yeah. uh, for match 67, 68. And then Afrika versus Don Juan, I'm imagining is going to be a lot closer, but I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe I give the edge to Don Juan. They're going to be playing on the red side tomorrow, so they should have the draft edges out the gate, and they have been starting to bring it back, it, you know, in, in their most recent series, so definitely not the end of the world for them. That's going to be a close one, and then as the split continues to draw on Saturday, APK KT, Sandbox versus Hanwha Life, and then another monster match, Genji versus Dragon X, and that's a really key one for Gen G as well as even T1. And yeah. also even Dragon X, I mean, they want to solidify them spot, their spot. They want to keep getting these wins. But there's a lot of importance riding on that match for all three of those teams. Yeah, especially for T1, actually. I feel like if anyone's going to play spoiler, it's going to be DRX against Gen.G. And uh, that will solidify T1's top spot. Unless, you know, Griffin is somehow able to steal away a win. But... That should be a speed run of a day with the one reset point being Afrika versus Dom One Gaming because honestly, we have no idea how that one's going to go. But that is going to be tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. For now, for tonight, it is good night. And Brendan Valdez and LS will be back with you tomorrow for some more LCK. Good night.